All right, guys, welcome back to our channel, Nick and Helmi. Today we are in Nobori Betsu, a town famous for its hot spring resort. It's one of the famous cities here in Hokkaido. And if you're coming down to Sapporo or Hakodate, you gotta visit this town. It is one of the best places to just experience onsen. And that's what we're gonna do today. But of course, we are here also for some food and sightseeing. We just hopped on the train from Hakodate this morning, two and a half hours ride to Nobori Betsu. Once you get to Nobori Betsu station, there is uh, two modes of transportation to get here, either by a taxi or via bus. Now we took the taxi because, well, we only have a night here, so we gotta get here really, really fast and explore everything about Nobori Betsu so we can show you how amazing this place is. But first up, definitely lunch. So for lunch, we're gonna eat at this little shop that does soba noodle. There's a hot version and then also a cold version, but online I saw they have quite a good review. They have tempura, which is one of the reason that we're gonna try this place. Now, the funny thing about a lot of the restaurant here in Nobori Betsu, they only open at a very short time frame. So between 11 o'clock to 2 p.m. So if you miss that, oh no, you might have to come back another day. But if you only have a day, you really need to come really early. That's why we left Hakodate at 9 o'clock in the morning. So right now it's about 11.50 in the morning. We're third in queue, so can I wait to try this place? Even in a spring town like Nobori Betsu, there's 7-Eleven. So don't worry guys, you will never get hungry. Wow, you can smell the sulfur. So opposite to the restaurant, there's this small statue shrine with the mascot of Jigo Kudani. Apparently the name is Tom. It's like ogre. Uh, it's supposed to be scary. So yeah. But this one is really cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't touch the water because it's too hot apparently. So we are inside the Fukuya Soba Rudo. It's very small and we are seated in like tatami style, the Japanese style, which is really nice. Yeah, by the and counter. You know. Yeah, yeah. And basically once you enter, you have to take off your shoes. So very like traditional Japanese. And there's few selection of cold soba and also hot soba. So we decided to have one hot soba. I think Nick ordered the tempura soba That's right. and I order the soba as well the tempura soba as well but the cold one so I got the hot soba oh. apparently this is like <laughs> a bowl everything is in the bowl including the prawn tempura oh my goodness and then we added a bit of um, um, egg as well so it's gonna be a delicious soba noodle is buckwheat noodle and it, the consistency it's a little bit like spaghetti you know like that kind of firm texture this this gets really soggy really fast I should have gone for the cold one The prawn itself, it's actually really crunchy, really crunchy and a little sweet. I love this. This is really good. It's like the perfect way to start your day eating at Nobori Betsu Onsen. Now I got a bit of that. The egg, the broth, and of course, the noodles. Oh yeah, really love, you can taste that buckwheat. So that the texture is like, a little bit of a, like, like a grainy texture, but it's a firm noodle. And then got that creaminess from the egg. Okay. Oh, and this one is Helmi's one. So even though this is like a cold soba, but it's still very nice. And I can imagine if it's summer, it's like perfect. It's not too soft, so it's like a bit chewy and it's very firm and you can taste the buckwheat as well. It's very, very nice. And you can taste, this is like fresh. So you got the seaweed right there and some, this is for the okonomiyaki, right? Yeah, bonito flakes. And what's this one? Let me try. Mmm, radish. Yeah. And the tempura as well. And Mm, One tip though, if you are going to Nobori Betsu during the winter season, like now, please get some heat packs and put it inside yeah. your gloves because it's gonna help. 
it's really cold. Like your fingers, the tip of your fingers, my goodness. So right now we are heading down to Jigokudani, the Hell Valley, which is a really famous site here in Noboribetsu Onsen. It's where you can see the source of the hot spring. So you're gonna smell a lot of sulfur when you get up there. But luckily, it's actually not far from where we're staying, which is uh, Daichi uh, Takimotokan, our hotel. It's a perfect location. So, it's not really far from the town, it's only like 5 minutes walk and you can smell the sulfur. It smells like a um, very stinky fart, like Nick's fart. Anyway, so that's why this town is very famous with the onsen because of this, which is apparently very good for the skin. There's a few tracks that you can do, we're down there, then we can do a loop there, there's a food bath over there as well. But unfortunately, I think the only one that's open is just where we are right now, the orange one. So apart from onsen, you can basically go to this place called Noboribetsu Bear Park, which is I think going up this ropeway, but we decided to skip that because we want to check something else so there's this convenience store called Seiko Mart which is very famous in Hokkaido, Hokkaido. so it's like 7-eleven Lawson but it's only in Hokkaido region now I also read it somewhere that the locals voted Seiko Mart as the number one convenience store in Hokkaido I don't know if it's still true right now but we've never been so we're definitely gonna check it out let's see if they got some hot food because it's so cold. It's always cold. Soft serve ice cream, normally it's like the vanilla, right? But this one has the chocolate and also melon. So, oops. So with Seiko Mart, they do have their own brand, which is this one, Seiko Mart. And look at that, it's melon. Obviously because Hokkaido is famous with melon. And there's like jumbo stuff. Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> And of course, we gotta check out the hot section. Look at this. This is a wall of beautiful products of hot food. Now, I'm looking at the fried chicken. In Tokyo, we call it the fried chicken karage. But here in Hokkaido, actually, they call it zangi. The difference is, I think it's marinated chicken. Then they put the batter, then they fry it. So it's, it has more taste. That's what they say. But I'm keen to try this one. All right, so we've got the zangi here and I got myself some salmon onigiri because why not? When we were in Tokyo, me and Helmi, we used to buy a lot of the Family Mart and Lawson's onigiri because it's so good. So we're definitely keen to try Seiko Mart's version. Mmm! Chicken's not very hot but still it's like nice and kind of juicy and plum and tender. Uh, the seasoning is kind of light though, but you can, you can feel that sweetness that comes through. You can feel that umami flavor coming through as well. Mm. The rice is actually nice. Seaweed is a little bit soggy there. The, the salmon, it's got flavor, but in between the rice and the salmon, like you can feel like there's like a heavy hit of like sea salt or something. Yeah, so when you bite it, there's like a like a crystal crunch, you know, from like the salt. But yeah, just wish the nori was fresh. Wow. Wow, everything melon here is really, really good. So the ice cream is not too sweet, but you can taste the melon. I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, Helmi. No, this is my own creation. <laughs> Helmi's own creation. So yeah. you got a peach Fanta with some melon yeah. ice well, cream. It's supposed to be like a vanilla ice cream. So imagine like Coke floaty, but this one, yeah, I just decided to mix my stuff. 
It doesn't look good, hey? Yeah, it looks really disgusting, but... <laughs> Good. It's like peachy, fizzy, and melony at the same time. <laughs> Melon pump. I think it's too tough because you know we've tried like the fresh melon pan, so obviously this is not like you know the best. So as you can see, it's quite dense and it's a bit tough and you know like very tough as well but I mean you know for 99 yen and it's I think it's a good snack especially like for breakfast 99 yen is very cheap right now it's about what three o'clock probably this one is like since in the morning so it's a bit tough yeah there's a lot of accommodation around Noboribetsu onsen but me and Helmi are one of those people that just love onsen especially in Japan so when we saw Daichi Takimotokan had the biggest bathhouse in Hokkaido, 5,000 square meter by the way, we were sold. It definitely feels more like a hotel than a ryokan because it's huge. They even got three buildings, arcades, gift shop areas. And if you're not staying there, you're also kind of welcome to use their bathhouse, but there's a small fee. Alright, so we are staying one night here at Takimotokan, which is in Noboribetsu. So normally Japanese room is quite small, right? But this one is huge and this huge room is basically our bedroom and also for dining as well. We book um, in-room dining or it's called Kaiseki and we will show you as well, obviously. But yeah, it's very short like that. Alright, on to the next one. Over here is like winter garden. Look. Well, it's indoor winter garden with the view of let's see. Wow. Oh, you can see the hot spring there. This is actually one of the biggest in Noboribetsu and they have a bath, right? A hot spring, which I think 5,000 square meter. It's like the largest onsen hot spring in Hokkaido. It's insane. That's why there's so many people. It's very famous. This is the toilet. Oh, actually, wow, very traditional look. Bathtub and also normal. And this is the toilet. And obviously, you have to open your shoes there. Okay, our stuff is very messy. Okay, our dinner is here. And basically, it's like an omakase kaiseki here, Japanese style. So we're gonna be eating down here, I guess. Ooh. So we got Japanese plum liquor, milk tofu with dashi, sweet potato. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Cheers. I'm not sure if you're supposed to finish it. Oh, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Very you should. <laughs> That's like a shot, help me. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm gonna just savor it. This is just like incredible. Everything is, is so, so unreal. I've never. <laughs> oh man, I don't know where to start, but I definitely gonna have to try the sashimi. Oh, oh my goodness, it's like so fatty, it's so creamy, a bit of that soya sauce, oh, so good. Sweet potato and yam, rolled salmon here. Very interesting, never seen one like this before. It's like pink in the middle. It's like, there's a little bit of uh, ginger, I think. Salmon's nice, like everything's here is like really nice, like, this is like a crazy experience that we've never tried before. 
But when you eat this, it's like, it's a very hearty meal. Like it's, it's crazy, it's a lot, but there is so much selection from this and it's just insane. Like your palate gets hit from every direction. Like the, the umami flavor, the sweetness, um, the, the creaminess, the butteriness of things, you know. And we haven't even gotten to the, the, the Japanese <laughs> hot pot or, or, or the crab, but it's insane. This is the steamed stingray with some ginger, apparently. So I guess this is the stingray, right? Yeah, there you go. Let's try this. Mmm! Wow, the meat is just super soft and fell off from this bone. I think you can eat this bone, right? I'm not sure. I probably wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the sauce is like very gingery and also sweet at the same time. It's very homey. Alright, so I think our hot pot is done. This is the beef hot pot, Aisai style. So in Japan, there are so many types of nabe, which is the hot pot, and this is one of them. The broth is super different, like it's very beefy and a bit of like soy sauce or mirin. It's very nice. So this is the crab and they're super nice. It's already open. Look, so you can just take out the meat. And look at this. Ooh, that's the egg. Right? Crab itself is actually cold, so it's already boiled and yeah, it's cold. And this is the vinegar. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, the snow crab itself is like very sweet already naturally it's sweet and it's in Hokkaido obviously it's like really good and this vinegar is very subtle vinegar it's not like super strong safe to say we were very full after that dinner but it was time to use the onsen next unfortunately I can't show you the inside but this is a reception area where they give you two towels. One's for uh, your hand towel and one's for the bath towel. And on the left, there's a men entrance and then a female entrance on the right. So it's two separate entrances. But once you get in, there is a locker and you have to pretty much uh, get naked. So like here in Japan, it is customary uh, to have everything off pretty much. So if you've never been to an onsen before, you're probably going to be really, really shocked. Alright, so there's a mini model outside so I can show you how things are inside. So that's the reception where you grab all the towels and then here is the men's locker area. That's the female. And they have two separate entrances here and it's all divided here. So you can't go either side. So once you go in there, there's this shower area. Once you shower, you're pretty much free to go anywhere to the different like spots there and then I think there is there's also like a stairs down I went down there and then that comes out here to this little area where there's a door that connects you to the outdoor bathhouse yeah it's crazy they even have a um, pool downstairs as well okay so that wraps up our time here at Noboribetsu Noboribetsu is a very small town very chill there's a lot of onsen, you can go onsen hopping and you can also go scenery sightseeing as well. So I hope this episode inspire you to travel around Noboribetsu. You can always do day trip but for us we just want to enjoy the 24 hour onsen. We went twice actually and our skin feel amazing. And if you want to go around Hokkaido, you can buy the Hokkaido Rail Pass. We'll give you the discount code right here. And we are going to Otaru next. So see you in the next episode. See ya!